How you doing? I'm Kevin O'Hara for AlcoholMastery.com. Today I'm going to talk about some of the patterns involved in socialising or how to change those patterns around, some tips how to do that. The socialising once you've stopped drinking alcohol, it's one of the more sort of difficult and complicated areas of your life, you know, that you can uh, look at. You know, I always say that quitting drinking is, is sort of simple in itself. You don't drink anymore and that's it it's over and done with but it's the actual habit itself and how that habit is integrated within your life that that's where all the problems are going to come from you know it's making changes and most of these changes are in some of the patterns that you've got throughout your life you know so you've got your basic uh, pattern of drinking let's say where you've got your trigger your um, behavior you know the actual drinking and the reward right and you know that especially integrates into your social life you know it's one of the biggest problems that people often have um, you know what do I do now once I don't drink anymore um, if I can't go to the pub then where do I go it's very difficult in, in the Western world you know to find other places it's starting to get easier because there are more and more places that um, are catering for people who don't drink. Um, I think one of the main things is is that it's just a it's a question of perception. We don't perceive that there are many places to go without having a drink, so there isn't, right? But if you sort of start looking around and uh, open your eyes a bit more, uh, for want of a better word, then you'll start to find that there are a lot more areas where you can go now you, you're going to have to change a lot of stuff about yourself i mean ma mostly up here inside your head i mean that's where most of the the mindset uh changes are going to have to be made you know if if you don't think that you can find other areas where you can enjoy yourself without drink if you don't think you can enjoy yourself without drink then you're handicapping yourself from day one uh, and that's one of the things that you really want to avoid so you know, I'll always go back to a very simple analogy, and that's when you change habit. A lot of different things about yourself change very quickly, right? Um, so, you know, one day you're you're drinking, and the next day you're not drinking. As I say, it's very easy to do that, to not drink, right? You just don't put it into your mouth, right? But the rest of it, all the um, the the outside, the the habitual stuff, you know, filling up those gaps, that's the thing that takes the the um, the effort. And a perfect analogy for this is when you move house. I mean, you you can plan all you want, right, for moving your, uh, your home. Um, and whether, depending on obviously where, you, where you're moving to, I mean, you could move down the street, you know, to a house that's three or four doors, doors down the road that's bigger and you want a bigger house and one's come available and you don't have to move very far. I mean, that's not going to be such a big change. You can move to a different uh, area of the city which either you're upgrading or downgrading and you've got to change there you can move to a different city within your country or you can move to a different country right uh, but like I say you, you can plan all this out and more than likely you have planned it out um, and you know exactly what day you're going to move you know who's going to move you know how you're going to do it you know what time you're going to be in there you know how much rent you're going to pay and blah 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 you know all this stuff right but when you get in there and you've just got a whole load of boxes and furniture there, unless you're lucky enough to have somebody who's going to unpack everything and put it in its right place when you get into the new house, you're going to have all this to deal with. You've got a new environment. So let's say that you move to a new city within your own country, right? You don't actually move to a different country where you've got the problem of a learning a new language or any of that kind of stuff. So let's say that you, you're you within the same country, but you've moved to a different city. Um, you, you've got a whole environmental change around you, not only in your surrounding area, the streets that, that are around you, but um, the basics of where to go for, um, to where the town hall is, where the licensing departments are, where the uh, tax office is, where the local shops are, where's the best shops, where's the best car parks, you know. If you don't know anything about these things, then you're going to have to learn very quickly. And like I say, you can do a lot of preparation, but it doesn't 
really um, take the place of actual experience. You know, then you've got that, you, you come down to your own house and you've got a, a different environment in your own house. You know, it's very unlikely that you're going to have exactly the same setup. So um, you might have a bigger house or a smaller house, but it's all going to be set up differently. So you've got to um, sort of figure out where you're going to put things. You've got to figure out how you're going to move around, who's going to be in what room. Um, you know, if you've got kids, where they're going to go, you know, and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, and when you move into this new house and you get everything sorted out, you've got this new routine that you've got to uh, you've got to slide into, and it's it's difficult to get into that routine. Now, this is sort of a very similar process because it happens overnight, right? You know, you move house, and like I say, even though you might have planned to do it. The actual move itself and you plunking yourself into a, into your new home that happens straight away you know it's a that's it it's done same thing with quitting drinking alcohol and it's the same sort of a process um, and most people will look at moving house as an opportunity for a fresh start and that's exactly the same way that you've got to view quitting drinking alcohol you've got to view it as an opportunity to leave the past where it is in the past right do things day to day on a moment by moment basis and get used to your life and hopefully have a better future right and plan for a better future you know and um that kind of analogy is is like i say it's one of the best ones because you know when when you get up when you come home from work let's say right like I say, it's one of the best analogies because, you know, when you get up in the morning and you're tired and you open your eyes up and you're thinking, where the hell am I, you know? Right, um, where's the door? Right, you find the door. You don't know where to push the door or pull it. You don't know where the bathroom is. You know, you don't know where your toothbrush is. You have to find all these things, you know, when you're uh, not at your best, right? Um, same thing when you go to work. You might have to, if you've got a new job, that's another part of it. Um, You've got to become accustomed to the new job. The kids have got to become accustomed to the new schools. Then when you come home at night, you, you've got to do the same thing over again. You've got to sort of uh, figure out where everything is. Where's the, the pots for cooking the food? Where's the, um, where's the toilet when you want to go to the toilet? You, you've got to sit in your chair. It might be the same chair that you had at home. You know, you might have the same TV, but it's a strange room. You know, And all of these things you've got to get used to. So quitting drinking is... Along the same lines, you know, you've got the same sort of patterns, you know, it's uh, it's just as much as you get into habits when you're at home, uh, you get into habits of being in the same house, being in the same street, being in the same city, being in the same job, in the same school, whatever it is, you've got the same thing with your drinking, you know, it's just a habitual thing, you tend to do the same things over and over and over again, same triggers spark off the same behaviours which uh, lead to the same rewards. And you've got to break the pattern. So you've got to introduce a pattern break within either the trigger, right? So you're not being triggered off or the trigger is triggering you off into another behavior. You've got to um, uh, put a pattern break within the behavior itself or you put a pattern break into the reward. Or, you know, multiples of these things, you know, but you can do them individually, right? You can put a pattern break in either of those three areas or you can do it like multiple so that you're, you have a different trigger, you have a different behavior and you lead into a different reward. You can have the same reward, but a different trigger and a different behavior, right? You know, and it's, it's as I say, thinking about these things before. Most people, as I say, will, will think a lot about the new move. You know, they'll think a lot about the logistics of it, how things are gonna work out. They'll think a lot about, you know, the, the, the future and what they're gonna do uh, the next day or the following day or whatever it is and you know a lot of people will have a list of what they're going to do but most people go into quitting drinking alcohol without any of that preparation at all and I think that's uh, an opportunity lost because you know the more preparation you can do beforehand including tapering down off the alcohol the better but <coughs> excuse me this is about socializing right so when I'm talking about all this um, all these areas of your life where you need to bring in the changes uh, with quitting drinking alcohol I'm talking about the moving and stuff like that it, you know socialization is one of the biggest areas and it's one of the areas where you've got to focus your um, your pattern changes so you've got a few different areas where you can introduce your pattern changes 
you've got the environment itself so what you would normally do where you would normally be when you do uh, drink right so have a look at that what triggers you to get into that environment and what the rewards are when you're sat there you know so you might uh, at the end of the day come home you're sat on the couch you know and you normally have a, a beer and your tv is in front of you you drink your beer and you feel relaxed right so that's the trigger is coming home the behavior is sitting on the couch and having your beer and the, the reward is feeling relaxed so you've got to understand that part of it and um, so within socialization within socializing with people you've got to understand where that fits in so what the triggers are where uh, what the behaviors are uh, and what's giving you the reward so you could still have the same friends but go to a different environment right so you know i don't advise people going to the pub for instance when they're quitting unless they you know they're they're doing so with a specific purpose in mind right going for a meal watching a football match um meeting somebody after work for a quick drink or whatever it is but you're doing it with uh, you've got a plan you know what you're going to drink when you get there you know how long you're going to stay there and once this is done you know you've had your drink the time is up you, you get out of there and you don't think about having uh, an alcoholic drink i mean you know you might think about it but i'm saying you know it's if you can go in prepared uh, as much prepared as possible in these situations then it's easier to get out of it again another thing you can change is the people you know i mean some people that you hang around with now some people that you socialize with are just not going to be compatible especially in the first you know few days weeks months etc you know some people that that um i used to hang around with they were just drinkers and you know however much they were my mates and i tried to hang around with them once i stopped drinking it was just i found that from from both perspectives it just wasn't workable you know for me to go in there and to think that i could still carry on with um, the same routine that I was doing before right the same behavior right the trigger was simple right the trigger was me finishing work at the end of the day and wanting to relax the behavior was going into the bar and sitting down and drinking with my mates and the reward was feeling drunk and going home and you know feeling happy and relaxed and all that kind of stuff and going home go to bed no problem falling uh, asleep or into the coma or whatever you want to call it and um, so for me to still think that i could still get triggered by going to the pub right still get triggered by finishing work and then go to the pub as the behavior and still get the root the same reward was just it was i just it was impossible to do because i wasn't getting the drunkenness right i wasn't and i'm not talking about that from the i mean from my perspective i wanted to stop right you know that i didn't want to drink anymore i knew what alcohol was doing to me right so from an intellectual point of view that was it i wasn't going to do it anymore from an habitual point of view from a subconscious um pattern ritual point of view that's a different story because your brain is still trying to fire off the habit is still trying to get you to have a drink because this is how it knows to get the reward and that's what it boils down to at the end of the day is getting that end reward um, so that's from one perspective I'm sat there while other people are drinking and I can't do that even though I know intellectually I don't want to do that anymore right I can't do it my body is telling me you know and I'm tempting myself all the time um, another point of view is as the lads are getting drunk um, as the lads are getting merrier and relaxing and you know I'm sat there like a like a spare prick and I'm not only am I getting jealous of what they're doing because they're sort of relaxing and having fun and i'm trying to get involved in this and stay involved in it but it's difficult because you know like the i'm stay i'm still on this level whereas their level from depending on what you look at it from you know if you're looking at it from a high point of view they're getting high they're starting to float away you know uh from my point of view the conversation is gradually ever so slightly every minute that goes by is starting to dip you know i'm still here these guys are going down here you know so the conversation is just disappearing um, and it's going into a drunken thing and then you start to look at your friends um from a different perspective then you know you start to look at them from uh you know you're still on this intelligent point of view right whereas they're going down here and you're starting to look at them like going what the hell am i doing you know um and then from their point of view as well they're looking at you as if to say well what are you doing here you know you're just like a spare prick you know you're just being here um you know this is not working you know and 
eventually the the phone calls will stop happening you know and um either way you start drifting apart now if your friends are there and they're involved in uh, your life with other things apart from alcohol you know if you're if you normally would eat with these people for instance right it's a different story you know because you can still do that you can still eat and you still have uh you still have a lot of the old pattern that's there that you can still hold on to um, the alcohol might be gone, but the rest of it is there. And when you look at it, when you look at socialising at the end of the day, that's what it's about. It's about being with people who you enjoy being with. It's about having a laugh. It's about um, the relaxation. It's about all the atmosphere and everything else that goes on around there, you know. Now, if if you're with people who are just drinking and that's the only reason that you're with them, right, is to get drunk. <clears throat> the only reason you're in this place is to drink and get drunk take the alcohol out of the situation and the whole thing falls apart because there's nothing left right you know i mean one of the things that i did over here before i stopped drinking alcohol was i uh, used to go to the bar and uh watch football so it was very easy you know that structure was there we arrive at the um at the bar sort of half an hour before the match starts we order our drinks we go up and we sort of had um, a general area where we all sat, you know, and Arsenal was always on uh, a certain TV, so everyone always knew uh, sort of roughly where they were going to sit. And you watched the match, you were shouting at the TV, it was all the, the, the hoo-ha with the thing, you either won and you were happy, you lost, you were sort of sad. And people said, all right, see you next week and stuff, and everyone filed out. And, and that was the same thing that happened day in and day out, right, every time we went up for the match. So taking the alcohol out of that situation, everything else was still the same. So it was very easy to to um, to amalgamate the me drinking orange juice instead of, um, instead of beer. You know, and it was difficult in the beginning because you sat there in the same situation, your, your brain is ticking over, and you know that the habit is just... And then all of a sudden you take a sip and you're expecting beer and you get a taste of orange juice and that sort of snaps you out a little bit but you go back into it again because you're still in the same um the same familiar situation the familiar surroundings some familiar people familiar um uh arsenal on the tv all that kind of stuff is all familiar so and you get another snap when you drink another bit of orange juice and so on and so forth but that soon you know you soon get over that kind of thing so i guess what i'm saying is that it, it depends on the situation so you can either change the environment you can change the people right you can change a combination of the both um you know and you can generally start looking around for alternatives you know and if you can do a lot of this beforehand you know before you even start out on this on, on your journey you know while you're tapering off on the alcohol while you're preparing for everything else think of places that you're going to go to socialize think of things that you're going to do to socialize so you know the first very first thing that you have to do is observe you know observe what you're doing and uh, what the triggers are what the behaviors are what the uh, rewards are that you're getting out of a particular situation and think about things from a situation to situation basis right you know not every social situation is going to be the same as the next one you know you might have friends like i had where you go out drinking and you watch a football match or you, you watch whatever game you're watching, right? You might have other friends that you go out for uh, drinks and meals with. You might have friends that you go out dancing with. You might have friends that come around to your house and do whatever, you know, have barbecues, that kind of thing. So it's all different social situations. You know, obviously you don't have to look at the social situations which don't involve alcohol, right? I'm only specifically talking about the alcohol here. And then, you know, once you've made your observations, I mean, you've got the power then to do something about it. You know what your triggers are, you know what the behaviours are, and you know what the end result is. So you can try and sort of move things around and say, well, yeah, if I if I if we do this in a different environment, if you can do that, then all well and good because you're changing, uh, you're, you're putting a, a, a pattern interrupt into your environment, and you know it tends to. Um, you know, a lot of the reason why we do certain things is because there's, there's habits are subconscious, right? So, you know, you, you tend to just do them because you're not thinking about it, right? You get into a certain situation. So, like for me, going into the bar and watching the Arsenal football, um, as soon as I get into the car and start driving down to the, to the match, 
walk in the door, it's like that, you know, you automatically go into the rest of the situation, right? Things are different, you talk about different things, you, the, the game on the TV is different, but there's so many different, uh, so many of the situations which are the same, that it's like a re repetitive pattern that goes over and over. And in order to, to stop yourself from drinking, you've got to introduce these pattern interrupts into a lot of the areas, right? Um, so it's looking for those pattern interrupts. It's trying to get situations where, you know, you can put a pattern interrupt like the orange juice in the thing where you, you're still going to the same situation, if you know what I mean, but you're, you're changing one thing about it, which is changing the whole meaning, right? So you can still go to the, 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 the football, you can still go to whatever situation is, but because you've changed the drink, then, you know, it's a different meaning. Um, I hope you understand what I'm talking about here. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that you can do and it it's generally boils down to a few different things. You either change your environment, you change something about that environment that is different, um, or you change the people that are there, you know. And, you know, as I say, it's one of the more difficult things that you, you have to do. But like anything else in this game, right, there is no such thing as cannot, right? There's only will not, right? So... If you say to me, well, I can't do this, it's that you won't do it. It's not that you can't do it, it's that you won't do it. It's, you know, there's, if you, if there's, if there's a will, there's a way, right, around this. So you have to have the will first, you have to have the, the, the absolute conviction that you want to do this, right? You have to have the commitment, the 100% commitment to doing it. And once you get that, you'll find a way, you know, you'll find a way around this. What I'm saying is, put in the preparation, think about things first. Uh, don't just go rushing into these places without doing anything beforehand, you know, and plan what you're going to do. Because the more you can plan, the more you have in your head when you walk into these situ situations, the more power you have, you know. So I hope you got something out of that. I know it's a bit of a long, rambly video, this one. But um, until next time, uh, if you have any questions at all, leave them down below in the comment section. If you want to sign up to the Alcohol Mastery Starter Pack, you know, for anyone who's trying to quit drinking, there's a lot of different courses in there um, trying to help you out. One of the most important ones, I think, is just a collection of videos that I've done over the years where I'm trying to talk to you about um, the sort of deprogramming yourself from the perspective of all the stuff that's been happening since you were born uh, we have been aiming you towards living an alcohol life, right? You know, uh, we're, we're surrounded by people who drink alcohol. Alcohol is everywhere you go, right? It's an acceptable part of society. And I'm, I'm trying to deprogram that and then reprogram you into doing some other things, you know, to thinking some different thoughts and just thinking about alcohol in a different way, thinking about your relationship with alcohol in a different way. So I think that's one of the most important things. Like I say, there's about, I think there's 32 or 33 videos in there that, um, are on YouTube, you can find them on YouTube, so there's nothing new there, but they're just put together into a, in, into a small little course, and hopefully you'll find some uh, value there. There's another couple of courses there as well. So until next time, I'm Kevin O'Hara for AlcoholMastery.com. Take care of yourself, keep the alcohol out of your mouth, onwards and upwards. Take care. Bye now.